Hello, welcome back. So today, uh, we're going to do a problem that's here. Our purpose here is going to be to try to find the currents through all the resistor and the voltage drops for all the resistors. So we want to find uh, V2, V4, V8, and we want to find I2, I4, and I8. So the subscripts are for the uh, resistors. Uh, fortunately, none of the resistors have the same values, so they're unique and can be uniquely identified by the subscript. Now, the way we're going to approach this problem is we're going to solve it in two different distinct ways. The first way we're going to do it is we're going to determine here that the voltage across this battery is 24 volts. That means since parallel voltages are equal and I know that this 8 here is in parallel with this 6. Now when I say 6, I mean the 2 plus the 4. I know that the voltages across the 8 and this total 6 is the same and they're both 24. So look how I can go from this point here to this point and to this point without any uh, without encountering any other resistances. And notice how I can go from this point here to this point on the other side of the 8 and this point on the other side of the 4 without encountering any resistances either. So this 6 and the 8 are in parallel and they both have 24 volts across them. So that means now I can write 24 volts going from here to here and I can write 24 volts going from here to here. Now that I know that, I can easily calculate the current going through this side. That happens to be simply I is equal to, so I in this case I8, that's the current going through the 8. That's equal to V8 divided by R8. So that's the V I know now is 24, and the resistance is 8. It's the same as the subscript. So now I know this is 3 amps. So I can put here 3 amps going through the 8 ohm resistor. Um, and let me also write down, I know what this is, since I'll explicitly write it down here. So there we go. So the 8 is done. Okay. Uh, let's draw a line. And now let's try and figure out what this guy is up here. So for that guy, let's say that the current, now I'm not going to say 4 or 2, but rather I'm just going to say I equals V over R. And for that series of resistors, I'm going to say the voltage I know is, t oops, is 24. And the resistance is 2 plus 4. They're in series, the 2 and the 4. Therefore, I have 24 divided by 6, which gives me 4. Now I know that the current here is 4 amps. Now that I know that that's 4 amps, I can easily calculate the voltage across this guy here saying V4 is equal to I4 times R4. Now that's easy. That's just 4 amps, right? Because I've determined that from here, multiplied by the resistance, which is 4 ohms, that gives me, 4 times 4 is 16 volts. 
So now I know that the drop across this guy is 16 volts. Now, I actually don't need to do any more work because I can now figure out what the drop across the 2 is. Since I know that across the whole thing it's 24, and I know that 16 of that 24 is being dropped across the 4, therefore I can just say V2 is equal to 24 minus 16, which gives me 8 volts. Now I can do that in that way, or alternatively, I could have simply said V2 is equal to I2 times R2, which is 4, right, from here. So 4 amps times 2 ohms, which gives me 8 volts again. So I, can have, I could do that in a couple of different ways. But nonetheless, now I have solved for everything. I know that I4 equals 4 amps. I know that V4 is 16 volts. And I also know that uh, I2 is also equal to 4 amps, just like the 4 ohm resistor. Both of these guys have 4 amps going through them. So this is one solution. And, um, and I can, you know, box my answers here. So I've got, oh, uh, there is one thing I haven't uh, solved yet, and I should do that now. What's the total current flowing through the battery? Well, this current here, let's take a look at this junction right here. Here, let me, let me do that in a different color, just so that I can show you this junction I'm talking about, is this red junction. I have three coming out and a four coming out. That means I must have going into it, three plus four is seven amps. You see? Because I know that I, I, if I have three amps and four amps coming out of the junction, that's going to equal seven amps total going in. And, and there is, I drew that right there. Now that I've now that we've solved this, right? We could say I total equal here is seven amps. There's nothing really left for us to solve. We've we've solved it all. But I'm going to do this again, and this time, I'm going to kind of use what I like to call more of a brute force analysis. So let's move this over a little bit, and let's see if we can find it a, a, a different way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find my total resistance for the circuit. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the 6, which is the 2 plus the 4. And I'm also going to reciprocate the 8. And then I'm going to reciprocate all that to get my total resistance, right? Because it's the sum of the reciprocals reciprocated. Now when I do this, I'm going to get I'm going to get this this decimal number 3.42857 and it goes on. I'm not going to round this number. I'm going to store it in the memory of my calculator. Uh, and I'll tell you why that's important because if I round it, I'm going to get the rest of my answers wrong. So to write it down, I could just, you know, say 3.43, but when I do calculations with it going forward, I'm always going to use the full mantissa stored in my memory of my calculator. Now, once I get this total resistance, let's get the total current. The total current, therefore, is the total voltage divided by the total resistance. That's going to give me 24 divided by this three point oops three point four two eight da 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 and now I'm going to get 
exactly 7 amps. So I was able to calculate this total, and I, I can verify that. That's what I got before. But now what I'm going to do is instead of using the method that I used before, at this point now, I'm going to use current division. So remember what the equation was. It's I1 is equal to the opposite side, so that's R2 divided by the total, R1 plus R2, times I total, and now I have I total, right? And then I'm going to say I2 is equal to the opposite side, R1, over the total, times the total current. And when I do this, now I have to denote my sides here, so I'm going to denote this side as being side number one, and I'm going to deny this side as being side number two. These are not resistances. These are just sides of the parallel circuit. Um, so now, I'll say R2 here is 2 plus 4, which is 6, over 8 plus 6 times 7. And then this one is R1, which is 8 over 8 plus 6 times 7. And these give me, so these do indeed give me 3 amps and 4 amps. And they are correct. Notice I2 was 4 amps and I1 is 3 amps. There we go. It works perfectly. Now once we get those currents, all we need to do now to calculate the voltage drops across each resistor is to say, all right, we could say V8, for example, is IR. No problem. We know the I. It's 3 times 8. That's 24 volts. Done. V2 is equal to IR again. In this case, it would be 4 times 2. That's going to give me an 8 volt drop. And V4, the 4 ohm resistor, is going to give me IR again. It's 4 times 4. And that's going to give me 16 volts. And so you see, uh, I got my I got the correct answers. V4 was 16 and V2 was 8. Okay? So I did this two different ways. One, uh, the second way I, I like to call more of a brute force method. It should always work using total resistance and then current division and then just calculating the voltages through each. But the first way that I did it was a bit more elegant because it, I took advantage of uh, some electrical circuit knowledge. So let's do another one now. So here is another question. Uh, I'm going to give you some time. I want you to pause the video here and see if you can fit, calculate the current through every resistor and the voltage drop across every resistor in this problem. Go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so I just want to start off by saying that this circuit is deliberately drawn this way in order to seem confusing. I'm going to redraw it so that it seems more straightforward. You see, the 9 and the 3 are actually in series. Going around this corner here does nothing. It's just a bend in the wire. It is not a junction. That point is not, I repeat, it is not a junction. The junction is actually here. Okay. 
So this is an 8. Well, what about the 2? Where does the 2 go? Watch how I draw the 2. You see, the 2 is in series with the rest of the circuit. Now I can draw my battery down here. You see, so the 2 is in series with the, the 9 and the 3 are in series, but the 8 and the 12 are in parallel. Now, this is a 34 volt battery. How do we do this? Well, we can't use the same technique that we used last time because the 8 volts does not have a 34 volt drop. How do we know that? Well, if we start here on this side of the battery, and we go around, we're not going to be able to get to the 8 ohm resistor without passing through the 2 first. Therefore, we are forced in this case to solve for the total resistance. And we're going to need to get the total current. So let's get the total resistance first. That's going to be this section here. So we'll go 1 over 9 plus 3 plus 1 over 8, and we'll reciprocate all that. And then the 2, remember, is in series, so we can simply add the 2 to that. So this gives me a resistance of 4.8 plus 2, which is 6.8 ohms. Okay. Now that I know the total resistance, I can get the total current because all I need to do is just go 34 divided by 6.8 and that's going to give me exactly 5 amps. So now let me let me draw that in here. So I know now that I have 5 amps going through total. That means I know that I have 5 amps going through this 2 ohm here. So what's the voltage drop for the 2? Well, the voltage drop for the 2 therefore is going to be IR 5 amps times 2 ohms. That's going to give me 10 voltage 10 volts across this guy. Okay. Now that I have done that, this problem becomes a lot easier because it becomes very similar to the problem before. Since I start out with 34 volts, then and I'm losing 10 of that 34, that means at this point I have 34 minus 10, which gives me 24 volts left. That means I now know that from this point to this point, I have, okay, let me move that over just a bit so you can see that better. That means from here to here, I have 24 volts like that. Okay? So now that I know that that's 24 volts across the parallel circuit, that means I know I have 24 volts across this one, right? Because the voltage across parallel circuits is equal. So therefore, I know this is 24 volts here. Okay, so let me write that down. I know that V8 equals 24 volts. And since I know that that is 24 volts, uh, what is the current going through that guy? So we know that the current through I8, let's push this up a bit, is going to be 24 volts divided by, oh, let's write the equation down first, 
right? It's V over R, which is 24 volts divided by 8 ohms. So that gives me 3 amps. Now I know that I have 3 amps going here. Well, listen, I don't need to do that calculation for the other side now because of this junction here, right here. If I know I have 5 coming in and I have 3 going out this arm, then I also know that I must have 2 going in this arm because 2 plus 3, right, 2 amps plus 3 amps is equal to 5 amps. And 5 amps is coming in and 2 plus 3 is going out of the junction. So now I know what the current through the 9 and the 3 is so I can easily calculate the voltage for those guys. I can simply state that the, well let's just do it over here. Let's go, let's switch back to um, blue here since we were working with blue or let's go back to black so I can just say uh, V9 is equal to IR that's 2 amps times 9 that's going to give me uh, 18 volts and V3 is IR that's 2 amps times 3 ohms, and that's going to give me 6 volts. And notice that they add up to 24, as they should. So, uh, now I've, I've solved everything for this problem. I did have to, so I, I do know the total current. I know the current through each resistor. The 2 ohm has 5 amps going through it. The 9 and the 3 have 2 amps. The 8 ohm has 3 amps. And the voltages across the 9 is 18. The, the 3 is 6. And the 8 is 24. I've solved everything for this problem. But I didn't use current division in this case. I could have. Uh, but. I find this method to be probably the simplest way to do it. So I hope that is a straightforward explanation of this problem. And we'll see you next time.